We're going to talk about bed bugs, which are named for where you usually find them, or maybe I should say where you do not want to find them. When you have a bed bug infestation, it can lead to all types of psychological effects. And with me today is Jennifer Gordon. She's our resident urban and medical entomologist. She's with Bug Lessons Consulting, and we're going to get her perspective. Uh, Jennifer, in our last recording that we did together, it was about cockroaches. And you said they were one of your favorite insects. Well, that's kind of a shocker. No one likes cockroaches. But um, what do you think about bed bugs? Would you say they're your favorite? Tell us about the bed bug. Sure. Oh, well, that's funny, Jeff. Um, you know, I'll say that I'm a different sort of person and bed bugs might be my favorite pest. I, I say maybe because I, I really love mosquitoes too, but maybe we can talk about those in an upcoming episode. But I've spent a great deal of my career working with these pests in particular, creating solutions, developing different products to tackle this group of bugs. And let me tell you, before we really get into it, bed bugs are fascinating as well. They have a very unique form of mating called traumatic insemination, where the male pierces the female's abdomen with this modified needle-like genitalia, and it inseminates her that way. Uh, when they have not fed, they are flattened, so they're only about as thick as a few sheets of paper, which really allows them to get into all sorts of cracks and crevices and really hide. And the adults don't have wings, which is pretty rare for insects. So, you know, for as awful as bed bugs can be, they really are survivors and evolutionary machines. But I'll start today by saying that compared to the ants and cockroaches that we've talked about before, there are not as many pest bed bugs. You know, in the family or the group that contains bed bugs, there are probably over 70 different species, but really only two or three of the bed bugs are pests to humans. Uh, there are some other members in this group that may end up biting people, but this normally happens by accident after the hosts the bed bugs were originally biting left their home and they left behind these hungry bat and bird bugs. So then when those hungry bugs go searching for a new meal, unfortunately, sometimes they end up biting people. But when we're talking about bed bugs, we're really talking about two major species in the United States. We're talking about Cymex lectularius, the bed bug, and Cymex hemipterus, the tropical bed bug. Um, Cymex lectularius is going to be spread, you know, pretty much throughout the entire continental United States, and you might run into the tropical bed bug in some of the southern states, such as Texas, Florida, or maybe even Hawaii. But we have, we humans have a really long history with bed bugs. You know, bed bugs have been found in ancient Egyptian tombs, but by the 1960s, they were called the bug that nobody knew by entomologists because long-lasting insecticides like DDT have reduced those populations to very low levels. However, by the late 1990s and early 2000s, this bug really made a resurgence and now it can be found in a lot of places. And I do mean a lot. We're talking homes, apartment buildings, libraries, office buildings, planes, public transit, taxis, Ubers, nursing homes. And I mean, the list really does go on and on. So uh, you mentioned how they might end up left behind. How do they get into a home or a building in the first place? Yeah, that's a great question. So bed bugs are excellent hiders and hitchhikers. You know, they don't move very fast, but they can catch a ride on a person's clothes, shoes, luggage, purse, wheelchair, and any other personal items that they may have on them. And that's how they wake, make their way into a person's home. And it only takes one mated female to start an infestation. So you get that mated female, you're unfortunate enough to bring her home. She bites the person, she lays eggs, those eggs hatch, and that cycle continues until until the person either notices the bites or the infestation grows, you know, and it can get pretty large. Um, in some situations, such as commercial or apartment buildings, individual bed bugs from a single population can kind of go exploring, so to speak, and the infestation can spread throughout a building that way. And there's been at least one study that's looked at the genetics of different bed bug populations within a building. So when you have one building and multiple infestations in different areas, and those studies have suggested that it was really probably only one or a couple of bed bugs that originated that really started the entire building wide infestation. So how extent can the infestation get? You've mentioned quite a bit of details here, but you know, if you're in a hotel and they're in one room, what can happen? Yeah, so I mean, when left unchecked, bed bug infestations can get you know, quite massive. 
I think normally bed bugs want to hide and avoid detection, but I've been in some homes where the infestation has been so large that I've actually found them out in the open and just crawling around. I remember the very first big infestation I ever visited, the gentleman had this series of hats hanging on the wall and I lifted one of those hats off and these exoskeletons just started floating down like snow on a winter day. Um, generally, though, the infestations do not get that bad. People start experiencing bites long before the infestations get out of control. Uh, and no, uh, they are not only found in beds. Uh, bed bugs like to huddle together in these groups, and someone who's looking for them are more than likely going to find those bugs in areas where the person spends their most time. So in homes, this can often be the bed, couches, computer chairs. I've seen them in toilets. You know, it's really where the person spends the majority of their time. And in an office building, the same is true. So ask yourself, where are people spending their most time? Is it their office chair? Is it a communal couch? lunchroom, you know, things like that. Starting to go itchy over here, Jennifer. Yeah. Um, I can see why, you know, when you say they're your, maybe a favorite, I can see why all the details and how they survive and what they do, very unique information so far. Now you mentioned the bites. I imagine that leads us to my next question. What do they eat and what do they need to survive? Sure. So, you know, compared to the ants and the cockroaches that we've talked about before, bed bugs are very picky eaters. Uh, they all prefer warm blooded animals and they drink blood. So as long as there is a host present, so, you know, in bed bug situation, we're talking about us as the host, humans as the host, as long as there is a host present for them to feed on every so often, bed bugs can survive. So again, unlike the ants and the cockroaches that we've talked about, cleanliness and sanitation won't necessarily get rid of your infestation. You know, as long as there are people present, once a bed bug has been introduced and has established and become an infestation, there's a possibility of that infestation as long as that bug was a mated female and there are people around to, to continue biting. So if I, shudder to think about this, get bed bugs. I just got to go buy a can of spray at the store. That's how you get rid of them. Or is there more to it? Definitely a lot more to it. And bed bugs are definitely one of those pests that, you know, hands down, you need a professional. They're really necessary. A pest management professional is really necessary to get rid of your bed bugs. Uh, PMPs, pest management professionals, they have commercially available insecticides that aren't available to us that they can apply to eliminate the infestation. But more importantly with the PMP, they can find the bug. So a good PMP is like a detective when you're tackling a bed bug infestation because bed bugs are master hiders. And a very thorough inspection, often taking hours long, is what is necessary to really find everywhere where the bed bugs are hiding so those PMPs can treat those locations. A lot of the residual insecticides that are available to us that are found in these different products are less effective because the vast majority of bed bug populations are resistant to those products. So a best practice is finding where the bugs are hiding and then treating them directly. There are some things that you can do to help that PMP though. And the big one is definitely reducing clutter. Bed bugs can basically hide anywhere that a piece of paper can go. So removing books, clutter, clothing, and other types of items that the bed bugs can use as, as harborages are really going to be important because what you're doing is you're making that space clear and you're removing all of the hiding places so that the PMP has fewer places that you know, they need to investigate to see if they can find those bugs. But when you're removing clutter, you know, I want to make sure that you're, you're careful and that you don't accidentally infest new locations. So any item that you want to keep that you can't treat or have the PMP to treat, you know, put that item in a black trash bag. Your clothing, you can treat clothes by putting them in the high setting in the dryer for 40 minutes. Heat is the important part to kill bed bugs. Washing your clothes is not necessarily what you're trying to do here. You're trying to heat those bed bugs up for a specific amount of time. So heat high setting in the dryer 40 so minutes. You mentioned chemistry to use as an insecticide and heat in the dryer. What about heating a building? So professionals do have heat treatments that they can use, and they're very good, very sophisticated forms of treatment that can be very effective. You know, the one thing I would say is that, you know, you or I, we're not going to be able to heat our building successfully because you really need specialized equipment that's going to be able to heat all the nooks and crevices and use thermometers in really hard to reach places. 
So you're talking about like a thermometer and a mattress or within a couch to make sure you're heating that space up to the temperature necessary and for the time necessary. But heat with a professional is absolutely something that has been proven effective in certain situations. All right. Good information. Uh, last question. What does a bed bug mean for public health? And uh, besides people, does it affect pets as well? Sure. Uh, you know, the one bit of good information about bed bugs is that they are not known to spread any pathogens to people. So that's fantastic. Um, but they do have a big impact on mental health. And, you know, I talk a lot about mental health with bed bugs, but or excuse me, with all insects, but with bed bugs in particular, the mental health consequences can perhaps be even greater. Uh, when normally, whenever I give talks on bed bugs, I start with the mental health impact because it can be so great for some people. People who've had bed bugs or experienced bed bugs are often plagued with anxiety, insomnia, isolation, thoughts of suicide, uh, suicidal attempts. So giving someone compassion who is dealing with bed bugs is really critical. And the bites themselves can be pretty bad. You know, there are some people who experience no reaction to those bites, but many people are going to get itchy bites, you know, ranging from something that looks like a, an itchy mosquito bite to some really very angry pustules. And in very severe infestations, the amount of bed bugs can get so big that they can remove so much blood from a person that they can become anemic. So one thing I kind of want to go back to real quick is prevention for bed bugs. Prevention with bed bugs, you know, it's definitely something that I keep talking about that an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. But with bed bugs in particular, this is really something to highlight. Set up protocols in your buildings to prevent bed bugs from being introduced. And there are some situations that are probably have a higher likelihood of introductions. So create those protocols that if a bed bug does get introduced, you prevent it from establishing and becoming an infestation because there is a difference between introducing a bed bug and an infestation of bed bugs. And then if you are in an area or in a building that might have, you know, the risk of infestations, there are protocols that you can put in place to prevent that infestation from spreading throughout the building as well. Uh, you know, bed bugs can be really challenging pests to get rid of, perhaps one of the hardest pests to tackle, but they can be overcome. And if you need any help, you can always reach out to me. Good information, Jennifer. You know, I travel a lot and you probably do as well. I've never brought one home, but I think if I felt I had one with me, I would definitely stop at the dryer. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Coming it's great. Yeah, no, that's great advice.